Hi everyone, Jamie Keat from Teachers Tech here today. I hope everyone's having a great day today. I'd like to thank Scott for having me on his channel. I've been coming to Scott's channel uh, for a while to get productivity tips, uh, checking out his Trello, and I'm glad to be able to work for uh, work with him on this one. And today I'm gonna be showing you uh, some of my favorite uh, reasons to use, or maybe the best reasons to be using Google Drive. If you can think of any other reasons, make sure you write them down below uh, in the comments here. But I'm gonna just get started and kind of showcasing some of my favorites here today. Sharing and collaboration has to be the two uh, best things about Google Drive. So I'm already in my Google Drive here and I just want to show you how powerful this can be. So if I go up to a folder, I can share a folder or the contents inside one at a time, but I like having a folder because it will inherit uh, all the information inside that folder will be inherited by whatever permission I put on the top level. So if I right click on this, I can go to share. You can also see the symbol up top here I could go, but I like to right click on things. So I'm gonna hit share and I wanna share this folder with somebody and I'm just gonna use one of my other accounts here and I can have some options how I want them to share it. So I could say, do I want them to be able to organize, add and edit? So if it was a group that I was working with, uh, maybe I want more content added to the folder from everybody, it'd be a great way if I gave them those permissions or maybe I just want them to view the work on it. So you have some options there. So I'm gonna leave it in there. If you look at the advanced tab, and this is overlooked sometimes. Now, if I click on advanced, I get a few more options. So this shows me uh, what's happening with who it, uh, who has access to this, but it can also change uh, uh, the view of it. You can see it's private, and this person would have, when I save it, access to it. But if I hit change, if I wanna make this folder public on the web, so anybody with the link uh, of this will be able to get in, inside that folder, so maybe there's some information I wanna share out and I just wanna give the link, they can access any uh, anything from that folder. So if I click on it and I hit save, you can see right now anyone has access can view. And that's what I'm gonna keep it for here. I'll hit save. Now, and this person, so I'm gonna hit this one, will have a, this person will have a few more, so they're gonna be able to organize and hit send. So I'm gonna hit done on this one. So you can see the little symbols there for that it shows that it shared. So if I go back to it, I can get a shareable link here. So I go ahead and I uh, can copy this shareable link. I could send it to somebody and anybody with that link would be able to access that, uh, that folder on it and get any information I put into it. The other person I added to it had, can have it to organize different things on it. So that's just the uh, thing that you can do with uh, your folders. You can also, if I open up, let's say you're planning a team meeting, if I open up a Google Docs, or this could be Sheets or Slides or any of the apps, Share is also up on the top. So if you're working on a folder or working on a document and you want to quickly share, just hit share and you'll see all the same options. Here's your shareable link up top. But remember this little advanced thing if you want the different options that you can add people here. So I'll add my account here uh, so that they can, let's say if I want them to be able to edit here. So I'll hit can edit and do you want them notified and I send it. So now if I go ahead and hit done, now other people can work on this document at the same time I work on this document. And then you can add some really good collaboration to it through comments. Now comments are right up top. So anybody that has access uh, that you've given uh, the access to add comments or edit, they can just simply click on here. So I could highlight maybe there was a, a date if I wanted to make sure that uh, it was the right date. I could ask a question. This won't show up when I print it or anything. This is just in between the people that have access to it. So I could say, is this the, is this the right date? I should spell some things great, correctly, right date. And then I can comment and then other people, whoever has access to this will see the comment and they can answer it. And you can actually even assign people uh, different roles. So I can go ahead and maybe highlight a different part. So maybe I'll add a, I'll hit a plus cause I've already added uh, some of these names and I'll add my other account and I can assign this person to uh, do this part. So I could say, go ahead and get the attendees. Uh, who is this? And you're responsible for this part. So assign, and then that person would know that that area is assigned. So it's a great way to collaborate and share different parts uh, inside Google Drive. 
An often overlooked feature is the OCR, or optical character recognition inside Google Drive, and this can save you a lot of time if you use it. So I have three different examples I want to show you. First one's just a simple PDF, uh, but I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to edit it. But what you can do, so you can see it's a PDF inside my Google Drive. I can, if I just, I'll open it first so you can see what it looks like. And if I right click on it and open with Google Docs, what's going to happen is it's going to actually uh, take all the text in it and put it inside Google Docs. So if I wanted to make adjustments to this, I can. So all this right now becomes something I can edit. So PDFs, when it's a something typed like that, works very, very quickly, works very well. So you can go ahead and edit it after that. So the next example uh, is uh, over here. So let's say I photos uh, photocopied something at work and uh, I don't want to type it all back out. So you can see if I open it, this is just uh, maybe an exam I had and I are some questions kind of slanted and everything, but I didn't want to type something out. Uh, and depending on the size of the document, this could save you some time. I'm going to right click on this, open with, again, I'm going to go to Google Docs. And what happens, it's using the OCR to pull out the characters. Now it does make a difference, the quality on the scan that you get. And this won't be perfect, this one, but it can still save you a lot of time uh, with typing uh, different things out. I guess it depends on how, how fast of a typer you are, but you can see it goes through and there's certain symbols that it would have trouble with, but a lot of the text from the document is correct on it. Then you can go through and edit it quite quickly. Lastly, so I'm going to go back to this one, my OCR files for an example. This is just an image. So this is uh, something I took um, on my phone just of a book uh, here to show an example. I can do the same thing here. There's different ways you can do this too. So if I right click, you notice I have the option I can usually open in there too with uh, different, uh, different apps. But I'm going to right click and go to Google Docs again. And so it's going to take this image that I just took on my phone and pull out the words and you'll see, and it will leave the image inside the Google Doc and it will put it up top. Just usually takes a few seconds to go through it. Again, so you can take an image and you can see here it is right here, what I, the picture I took and down below, uh, these, this is the text it's pulling out now that I can edit. Again, it doesn't come out perfect all the time, but it can still save you a lot of time, uh, especially uh, if you just don't want to be sitting there typing and just go through and edit. So take a look at the OCR uh, feature in Google Drive. If you have a really large email to send to someone, a really large file attachment, make sure you understand how Google Drive can be used. So if I go and compose a message in Gmail, if I was sending it to someone, I'll just send it to myself. Um, and this will be a movie that I'm attaching. So the, more, the largest is 25 megs that you can attach as a file inside your Gmail. But what you can do is use the Google Drive option here and go to your folder. So in case if it's a video and this is larger than 25 megs, so what they're saying is they're gonna actually share it through Google Drive. Now, when I do this though, it will have to get the correct uh, permissions. And so as I send it, um, it's already, I had that already shared with myself, but it will prompt you to make sure you understand when you send it, it has to be shared correctly for the person to be able to open. So take advantage of that little ad from Google Drive if you have some really large files to send. Revision history is something that can save you a lot of time, especially if you think you've deleted everything from a document. Now this will work in Google Docs, uh, Sheets or Slides. I'm gonna open up this document here for an example. So if I go in this and you can see I don't have a lot of type, this is something I was just using as an example. But if I go up to File, Version History and See Version History up here, if I click on it, what I can do now, I'm gonna expand this with this little arrow here and you notice that I can see a lot more. Well, now I can see where the person, maybe there was some copy pasting, see where the information was got to. And I always can revert back to this part. So as I click on different ones, you can see the changes um, as it progressed uh, through the document. So if I go back, so if I wanted to this one, I could restore the version and it will restore it. 
and now I have all this information. The other thing is, if I had a group of people working on this, I could actually see what who did what to what part of it. So it's a great way to see, uh, as a teacher, to see uh, students do their work. Now, and if sometimes you think maybe you deleted everything and you can't get back to a certain part, uh, part of it, just go to revision history and then go back in time and see what you can find there. Voice typing is something that works quite well in Google Drive also. I'm going to open up Google, uh, another Google Docs. And inside Google Docs, when it opens up, just check out under Tools and Voice Typing. And I'll just give you a little demo. So when I click on this, all I have to do is click this to speak. So when I click on this, all I have to do is this to speak, period. New line. I hope everyone is having a great day, exclamation mark. So that's just a little example. I can actually insert tables and format my document too. You just have to kind of go through and learn all the commands for it. So give it a try. If, it, if you think it could speed you up, try Google's voice typing inside Google Docs. There's so many great apps connected to Google Drive. The one I want to talk about though in this video is Google Forms. So if you want to collect information, so whether it be your business, uh, maybe you want to send out uh, a business to collect information, could be questions, maybe it's an order form, uh, maybe it's a place to, for people to upload information to give to you. Uh, go ahead and go try Google Forms on this and there's some great templates that will uh, have you start. So you can start from scratch, which is uh, pretty easy to do. You can go ahead and uh, open these up and you can see some of the examples that you have. Uh, I know at work we use them quite a bit to collect information. So maybe it was even event feedback that you would like or an order form. So all you have to do, so if I was going to click on a template, I can go through and I can start adjusting these colors and uh, uh, images up top very quickly if I wanted to. I can type in new questions, change the type of questions, and when it's all ready to go, you can just go up to the send option and you can see how you can email, link it, embed it in a website, or go to social media. You have lots of different options to customize it through the settings on this one so you can see how you can uh, change it. I use it for quizzes at school so you can turn it into a quiz and it will actually even grade it for you. So take a look at Google Forms. If you want to go and collect information for a reason, Google Forms gives you that ability to quickly do it.